I want to start with saying thanks. Oh, good, the New York Times. How's it going? Got to wait for them. Yeah, take that front seat, man. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting like live tweet. Okay. All right, yeah. So what I intend to do here is just uh, offer some brief remarks. I'll then open it up to questions from the press, if there are any. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm able to go probably most of this hour. I need to leave probably like uh, 11.45, something like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't expect actually things will take that long, but I'm happy to answer your, your questions uh, to your satisfaction. Um, so I'd like to start with some thanks. We, since uh, a month ago, began raising money when we were attacked by 20 states across the country. Um, we've been f sued in many venues across the country, different federal courts. Sometimes some states pursue us in two different federal courts at the same time, like in the case of Pennsylvania and New Jersey, uh, which is, of course, improper uh, and vile. But uh, I'd like to tell you our response to the, to the judge's motion or the judge's order in, in Washington yesterday. And I'd also like to communicate what our supporters uh, have delivered to us today since, uh, as of a week ago, we began fundraising in earnest. Um, and as of last night, we reached our first goal in that fundraising. So uh, again, my thanks to the people who have supported Defense Distributed at this time. It's very expensive running this kind of multi-state, parallel, federal you know, litigation. Um, and our supporters have uh, delivered us as of now. Um, so what they've bought today is something very specific. If you go to our website, defcad.com, uh, as of this morning, early this morning, we began selling the files for 3D printed guns and blueprints uh, to the public. We began fulfilling those as well nationwide. This is part of our operation to continue our efforts of digitization and the distribution of, of this type of technology. I feel in no way that we've been interrupted. And in fact, I found the judge's order yesterday, I mean, besides being you know, hysterical and all that, to be not a, a suspension of our operations, but instead an authorization. And I'll explain that to you. Um, many of these attorneys general across the country have been saying, well, look, you know, we stopped Defense Distributed from sharing these plans. Or, you know, now no one can, can uh, print a gun at home. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I had to read yesterday. And so when I'm sitting here with you, again, like the, my point isn't that, of course, you know you can go anywhere and download this stuff all over the Internet. This action uh, that the states have brought and, of course, all this intense press coverage already made sure that that stuff would be online forever. Uh, that's not the point I'm here to make. The point I'm here to make is um, this judge's order stopping us from simply giving things away was only an authorization that we could sell it, that we could mail it, that we could email it, that we could provide it by secure transfer. Uh, I will be doing all of those things now. Uh, my congratulations to the attorneys general for saving America. Uh, I really feel like instead of, uh, a lot of this to me was about principle. For many years, I simply just chose not to sell these files because I'm, a, like, like I'm an open source activist. I believed in demonstrating that there was a right to commit this information to the public domain. And so for many years, I simply chose not to sell the files. But uh, this is my opportunity to, to correct the media kind of all in one place, um, you know, to, to read headline after headline about how uh, you can no longer 3D print a gun, or you can no longer have the files for these things. This is not true. Uh, this has never been true. And I, I now have to demonstrate it to you forcefully to, to deliver the point. Everyone in America who wants these files will get them. Uh, they're allowed to name their own price at our website. Uh, making the money isn't important to me. I'm happy now at this point to become the iTunes of downloadable guns if I can't be the Napster. And to some degree, like, I regret that these attorneys general had to drive this you know, into a, a commercial space the way they've done it. But we've always been prepared to go there. Now, 
I, I know that there's going to be questions about how this is affected, and I'll let you, I'll let you ask those. But the other thing I'd like to add is uh, we're continuing to raise money uh, for our lawsuits, and of course the money that we raise in selling these files will immediately go uh, toward those. When we reach our goal of 400000 which I mean, we're halfway, uh, I'll announce like what the divisions are of, of that money. Like uh, Right now it's about half in cryptocurrency, which I think is exciting and newsworthy by itself. Um, the internet community has really largely spoken on this issue. Uh, they've decided that censorship is not something that they'll abide, and certainly something that they can afford to correct. Um, I'm sure it doesn't need saying, but of course I'll, I'll be challenging this judge's order in the Ninth Circuit. We have many actions across the country as well. We'll be, we'll be pursuing those. And then I suppose a final comment before we explain the actual mechanics of how we're selling these files and everything uh, is that I don't, I don't know how to make it clear at this point. My, my attempt here today is, is to clarify the debate. Anyone who wants these files is going to get them. I'm going to sell them to them. I'm going to ship them. That began this morning. That will never be interrupted. The free exchange of these ideas will never be interrupted, and now people can participate on my website. It's not just me selling the files. Uh, I'm inviting the public to sell their own files and share in the, in the profit making with me. I suppose then the point here is what did we get yesterday in court? We didn't get an interruption to the access to these files. We only got the direct kneecapping and subversion of our First Amendment. To this point, like, I didn't expect like, great reporting on what was happening in, in court. I understand. Things move quickly. It's all, it's all about headlines. But going forward, I think I'd like these points to be clarified a bit more, if you'd assist me. Everyone's going to continue to get these files. I'm going to continue to sell them. And frankly, it will be a stupendous success because of all the attention and the, and the many tens of thousands of signups that I've already secured on my, on my website. The only thing that's being stopped and injured as these lawsuits proceed is your right to speak, your right to put things on the internet, and states' asserted powers, basically, that, that they can control who has, a web, who has a website and who does what with the website. You know, I can't make that much clearer. Um, so I'd like some assistance. I know many people out there, audiences, and maybe even you all, don't have an interest in guns, but I think you have an interest in the First Amendment. Uh, all right, I'm happy to take questions. Is your selling these uh, files a violation of yesterday's order? Uh, no, in fact, I'm following yesterday's order, which directs me to sell the files and to mail them and to email them. Uh, the judge was very gracious to, uh, to put that in black letter for me. You said customers can name their own price. You sell them anywhere from a penny to whatever. That's right. Name your own price. But they have to come up with some kind of I saw somebody put zero dollars in. Uh, I think that I think we still sell that. Yeah. So. How many have you sold so far? Uh, I don't have a good estimate right now. Uh, a guess? A few hundred, I would suppose. Uh, I suppose though, another comment worth adding here is that in the in the intensity of opposition to these files and their download, remember I had these files online for five days before they were, quote unquote, taken down. You know, there were just tens of thousands of downloads in that period, and of course there are many, there are many mirrors of our files online. Some, I mean, rumors of, of downloads in the millions. So, you know, I don't, I don't expect sales of that same volume, but then again, it's in the clear. Uh, other questions? I feel like I maybe didn't directly describe how easy this is or, or what's happening on the website, but you're all welcome to go to defcad.com right now and, and see. You would browse the files just like you would browse them for download. Um, instead of clicking download, you, you would click purchase. So if you can go to a website and you can find the files and they can be emailed to you or mailed to you, what's the difference? Has anyone started selling their own files? Uh, yeah, we've had many sign Who asked that question? Sorry, yeah. We've had many sign-ups. I haven't had a chance to approve any of them yet. Uh, I've been here all morning, but lots of people wanted to participate for about a, uh, a couple months, right, since July. Since the middle of July, I've been advertising that you could that you could participate in our platform. So we have many people in line um, now. With this change of affairs, you know, more people want. Uh, we've we've changed the administration of it, but like we have many people who want to share and, and sell the files. Our profit sharing is 50 percent, by the way. That's better than iTunes. Is there any estimate of how uh, many people would purchase these files? An estimate? Yeah. I suppose it depends on you guys, doesn't it? Uh, how many people hear the news? 
but no early, no in-house estimate or well, anything like that? Well, not really. No, I mean, I've, I've never sold the files before. I've only offered them for free. And, you know, when it's frictionless, uh, that's in the millions. But uh, what, what can we guess? I suppose after this news and probably years of litigation, we'll, we'll talk about millions more. I, I don't know. Yeah. In your apartment, uh, <laughs> there was a metal. You blew up. A lot changed since then, I guess. But there was at the time there was a metal firing pin that, that I guess wouldn't make it completely undetectable. Is it still like that, or has that changed? Okay. So, yeah. So th there's always this combination of like, well, uh, a lot of these blueprints aren't. They're just normal blueprints for guns that have been online for, in some cases, for like 10 years, 15 years. It depends. Uh, yeah, and some of our blueprints are like for like this printable gun, for example. There's actually a pretty narrow range of guns that can be made on 3D printers. And of course, there's this problem, like, do you, do you include enough metal to, to not violate these federal laws? Yeah, you, can, you should include metal, and then of course, you have to include some metal for the gun to even work. But all of this is a, a matter of, of federal law. There's a legal way to make guns like these. There's a legal way to possess them. The files themselves, though, don't really implicate this. Uh, it's legal no matter what to have files for guns. Plastic, not plastic, separate question. Um, of course, all those files, my files, anyone else's files, are, are free to be uh, to be purchased uh, on our platform as of this morning. Yeah. Uh, Nate Mattis with Ars Technica. Sure. And I'm just wondering if the decision to sell speaks at all to the financial health of the company. Are you guys still doing okay? Is this more kind of a principled thing and way to comply? I think the only way I can I can show that you know we don't we're not desperate for cash is that uh, you get to name your own price, you know and we'll we'll probably just cover costs right. I, I remember when Radiohead offered their <laughs> album for they they ended up reporting like a year later they didn't make really any money on it. I don't expect to make real money on it, but I I do expect to cover my costs and I also expect to demonstrate acquisition of these files in the hundreds of thousands to a point to demonstrate that there is no effective barring of the sharing of this information and in fact the will the states demonstration that they would try to prevent you from having this, these files is the, the surest way to secure that people will access the information. There's plenty of people out there right now that don't want this stuff, don't care about it, until they see that the Attorney General of Pennsylvania would rather they not have it. Just a, just a point of clarification, you're talking about the files, you're not talking about the actual 3D print guns. Right, now I couldn't do that, that would be very expensive. Uh, yeah, just the files. Um, but again, you know, I read these statements like, well, yesterday we stopped people from being able to print guns. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I think we all know that that did not happen. Um, and in a perverse way, right? And that's why we named this operation the way we did. Uh, this is, look, I, uh, my company has a history of these things. You know, I'm, I make a thing. I try to put it online. I get in trouble for it. Well, that's what drives the interest in it in the first place. And then I have to get out of trouble for that, so I build a new technology. And then we get in trouble with that technology. And then we build another technology to get ourselves out of that trouble. I mean, all that's happened here because of this judge's order is perhaps a doubling or tripling of the valuation of my own company, of our economic power and our ability to deliver files to these people. The name of our company is Defense Distributed. Uh, I see nothing but the ability to totally fulfill the objective contained in the name of my organization. But I do hope, like, like I'm not just trying to be smarmy here, I, I hope that it now comes out in this, after this action, that, that really what's at stake in the courts is simply the government's power to tell you what you can and can't have, what you can and can't download online. Because uh, we're fine, guys. Everyone's going to have what they want from us. No problem. Probably easier than they would have had it before, because they wouldn't know who I am. They wouldn't know that they wanted this without the opposition to it. A lot of people focusing on the gun aspect and the fact that you're giving away files for guns, but you're focusing more on the fact that this is a First Amendment issue. It's always been that for me. I mean, that's why I decided to sue the State Department in the first place. Now, I'll add, I still have a federal license from the State Department to publish this stuff in the public domain. That's the only thing that this judge interrupted the other day. This judge's order, I, I, I ask you to read it. The final two pages are great. He says, uh, yeah, yeah, we've abridged the First Amendment. Well, that's the one thing that you don't get to do to the First Amendment. That's the one word that's impermissible. Well, there's a lot of unforced errors in that, in that order. All, all he did was prevent someone from, one person, right, one company from speaking, but not from doing our objective, right, which is giving people access to defense technology. I could always do that. Are you prepared for further legal action as a result of what happened? Yeah. Sure, I'm always prepared for it. 
I don't know. To some degree, I always expect it, too. But they have it to do, don't they? Uh, mm. Not really. Remember, I've been at this for many years. Um, way more people download it than ever choose to do anything with it. And I think at this point, rightly so, Argon has a reputation for, for not really being credible like uh, to use and manufacture. You can't really get it right. It's, it's more of an art than a than science. So I think with that reputation, most people know that it's, if they make it, it's just a curiosity. They make it so that they have like a, what do you, what do you call it, one of these coffee table pieces or something. Yeah. I think most people at this point know that it's not something that you use. But of course, the only thing that makes it interesting is that you can use it. It is a usable gun, and that's why we're all in this room today. But the more interesting thing to me, and I think the reason why 20 states around the Union ran to federal court uh, last month is because this is about the blueprints for firearms in general, and understanding that because of the internet and because of like, the ever-present nature of electronic media, you'll always be able to download gun plans and gun parts, and you'll always know how to make these. Yeah, I know that there's like something exotic about a printed gun, but again, that's just a kind of easy demonstration of, of the technology in general. Digital technology has immeasurably benefited the right to keep and bear arms. That's a message that I, that I continue to, to advocate. I think as well, like, that's a message that is being challenged in court. But importantly, like, that's a, a message that's trying to be challenged in court. It's, it's speech that's trying to be challenged. Like this weekend, for example, you know, I, I was fundraising on my website asking for money. New Jersey and Pennsylvania tried to hold me in contempt of court for fundraising for my, for my lawsuit. When we begin to try to control the speech about guns, we then begin to try to control the speech about the speech, and the chain continues to rattle. This is despicable. Um, and I have to demonstrate that at no point have I ever been disabled in giving people access to this technology. I have to show you that. that this is clearly about a speech power. It's about the power of states to control websites, like the Attorney General of New Jersey, right? He would walk into Chancery Court in Newark and ask a judge there to take a website hosted in Texas off of the internet. One of you should ask him how he thinks he can do that. Yeah. So you freely admitted that the Liberator didn't Shot, I've said that for years. Ten times or so before it blows up. Yeah. Um, so in that context, the argument by the state is basically that this table, coffee table piece, represents <coughs> such a threat to public safety that they're willing to abridge our innate right to free speech. And I'm kind of wondering, what is your opinion to why they're so threatened by such a I, I don't think truly. Device. I understand. I don't think truly that the states are threatened by this device. We've lived in a world where you could print this gun for what almost six years now. You know, it, it hasn't interrupted our lives. The challenge is that is the symbolic challenge. And what got everyone so upset is when I got this license from the State Department, and I said, "Hey, I think um, I think gun control is much more difficult now." Of course, I've been saying that for years, but now the challenge is very real. And of course, these. These state attorney generals let the mask slip to some degree. They said, well, if the federal government won't act, we will. Um, well, sorry, no, state governments don't have the power to take over a, a federal function. They don't have the power to, to overcome the function of uh, the State Department or to second guess its designations. Or in your question, they can make no law that abridges the freedom of speech. It's in the text. It's pretty easy. Now, I don't know why they feel that they can, but the important thing is they can't. Uh, other questions? Some gun control advocates have been talking about how this isn't safe because there's no background checks or serial, like serial numbers. What is your response to that? Uh, to what? Downloading files. No background checks to downloading files. Right. This yeah. Is, I think they're focusing more on the gun aspect. Yeah. Of I, uh, I disagree with the, like, the framing of the question. There's no background checks for, for downloading anything in this country. There's no background checks when you walk into the public library here downtown, um, as it should be. And if it's, in the judge's words, wholly unpersuasive uh, that you should have to deal with crime after the fact that it's committed, well, I'm sorry, we live in a nation of laws based upon that very principle.
kind of touched on it earlier. Why do you think the, the judge's ruling is so terrible? Terrible? <laughs> well, I mean, it is. It's, it's rather breathless, right? Read it. He says, uh, yeah, he basically accepts the plaintiff's argument that the world would end if he somehow, if he didn't hold out his hand and block this information. Of course, we all understand that the harm that the state suggests would happen if he didn't act has already happened. We've been living in a world of these files for many years. You can download them anywhere. This, this description of his in this order, like, oh, well, maybe some, like, I would call it some cybernaut with access to BitTorrent, can find these files in the dark recesses of the internet. This is, this is a farce. We are, with 30 seconds of Googling, any of you right now can get these files. You know where they are. You've all reported on it, half of you, where they are right now, in the clear net. They're on many of the major CAD sites online and have been. When I relaunched my site last month and drove all these states to court, what I hoped to demonstrate was, uh, look, all the files that I chose to host were files that I took from other CAD sites. Uh, just, just to do it. And that's how I defeated most of the, of the restraining order hearings that these states brought against me. Remember that in about five days, they brought four or five different restraining order hearings against me. I beat every one of them until they could find a judge in a convenient forum who would just accept without question their cartoonish description of reality. Well, look, I can't, I can't stop, you know, some judge from <laughs> understand, you know, I, whatever. I, they can, uh, he can live in whatever world he wants to live in, but, but we understand the alternative. Just for, just for clarification, you said a while ago that this, uh, the judge's order was interpreted as uh, stopping access to these, yet you're saying it, it gives you to go ahead and do it, basically. You're going to go ahead and do it. Could you elaborate on that? And kind of yeah, I'd, I'd point you to the final page of the ruling. Right after he makes a mockery of the First Amendment, he says, under the AACA, these files are permitted to be mailed, emailed, securely transferred, uploaded, basically everything except, in his mind, posted on the Internet. I don't find there to be a meaningful difference between going to my website and clicking a button and getting, getting the file by email versus going to my website, clicking a button, and getting the file delivered to your browser. So how would you make them available? I mean, how, how, if I want to get one, how would I do it? What we started this morning was direct fulfillment uh, on USB drives because we already have that infrastructure uh, in our operations. And then we'll build out all the other infrastructure as well. I'm, I'm happy to do secure transfer. I'm happy to do all, anything that the judge has permitted. And I'm, I'm grateful that he did so. Uh, I just, yeah, it just, it's hard for me to demonstrate any other way that this was not an interruption of our ability to share this information. Every American is completely free to, to possess this information, use it. None of that's ever been disputed in these actions. These actions are matters of Administrative law, like the state's claim in Washington, is, is largely an APA claim, uh, which will be corrected by the Ninth Circuit of the Supreme Court. You know, the, the DOJ is the primary defendant in that action. These aren't questions about public safety and, and the First Amendment. The, the judge refused to even answer those. These are qu obscure questions of administrative law. And I would offer that the states don't even have standing to bring them. But if they're going to go out into the press and talk to all of you and say that I've been stopped from sharing things, I have to contradict that. I'm sorry. That's not what this is about. This is about these states desperately flailing for some type of internet power to prevent people from sharing things online. I won't give it to them. I will let them break your internet, though. I will let them go to some federal judge who, and let that judge say something like, well, you know, the internet, the internet doesn't work now. Uh, so, so say I. And, and I hope that you'll report on how absurd that is. And I, I consider it to be barbaric, the way that Facebook began to immediately in real time censor links to websites like ours. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but uh, if you were to type in some of the, the URLs to some of the, the websites hosting 3D printed files for firearms, Facebook simply doesn't allow you to post it. Um, now look, I'm not on Facebook. That hell is a hell of your own making. Uh, in, enjoy your, your playground, you know. But to some degree, we control a lot of our own fate. Like we build our own platforms. Right? I would never rely on Facebook for the, the transmission of data like this. And if, if you're on Facebook looking for 3D printed guns, you're probably one of those people that's you know, not worthy of having a 3D printed gun in the first place. Uh, oh, I do want to point out though that I, I think what Amazon did though, like someone posted a, someone published a book with, with some of the code for the Liberator on Amazon, and Amazon took that down. I consider that to be slightly different from social media censorship. Uh, that, that was truly a scary thing for me to see. You know, every time that 
Amazon just vanishes books from your Kindle or from its own, its own platform. The code for these guns is legal. It's, as I've explained to you today, it's legal for Americans to possess. It's legal to put it in a book and to publish it. The judge said so in his order as well. If I wanted to, I could publish all the code in books if I somehow wanted to punish myself that badly. Amazon seemed fit to not allow that to happen. I, I find that to be scary. But of course, activists are putting books like this in different public libraries and creating these e-books. I mean, they'll always be accessible. Uh, other questions? Cody, you had mentioned a while ago that you're that uh, you will officially challenge the uh, uh, the ruling, the yesterday's ruling in the appeals court, the Ninth Circuit. Uh, could you elaborate on that a little bit? How are you? What's what are the points of your challenge? And when you when you plan to file? Uh, our briefs contain all the points of our challenge. Uh, it's not just a First Amendment claim for us. You know, we have a license from the U.S. State Department. So largely, this dispute will hang around whether the State Department followed its own procedures in issuing in issuing this license. Not terribly difficult in the end. Um, basically, the way that the states have to survive at the ninth is to prove that there's no First Amendment interest, there's no Second Amendment interest, the government violated the APA, the DOJ was out of bounds, it didn't get concurrence, the State Department thing was arbitrary and capricious. It's quite a hill for them to climb. And look, largely, the, it's not my responsibility to spend my own money to defend a decision of the federal government. The federal government's good at defending its own decisions. But I'm along for the ride because I have to represent the interests of the American people in having access to this information. I won't consent to the judgments of some judge that says, well, there's no right to put this stuff online. That's hilarious and absurd. Yeah? Uh, just to clarify, to, to help um, you know, not to fight the court, stay with it and what, what's going on right now, uh, the files are put on a USB and then mailed to as of, uh, customers? As of today, we're, we're directly fulfilling on USBs because we have that uh, capability. But of course, this judge has permitted us to, uh, to email them and to provide secure download links. Has the state of Texas been helpful, hurtful, or just kind of stayed completely out of it? No comment. Not involved. Not involved. Yeah. So you raised $200,000 in donations so far? That's right. In about a week, I was, week. I was impressed to see that. Uh, but I've incentivized the people. To some degree, we've, I think we've been successful in communicating that, look, we're not just a nonprofit here. We're a, a public defense firm. We're a defense contractor. We just don't give our technology to the state. We give our technology to the public. So I offered the public a choice. If they would help fund some of this, this litigation, I would use their money uh, to continue to develop our platforms and technology. So what I'm announcing today is, is defcad.com relaunched with the files for sale. But there's actually some subtle things beyond that. I encourage you to sign up and see. Uh, we have a, an engineering exchange program. Uh, we have a library, a library program as well where you can submit materials. And so our archiving, cataloging, digitization operations, they all proceed in earnest because the people have chosen to fund this lawsuit and to continue to fund our research and development. I'm happy that even if 20 states in the union come to court and sue us, what, it slowed us down for like a week? Mm. And, and the donations are, uh, the, you have a total of 400000 you say, and uh, that's for your legal... Yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to get to 400000 in two weeks. I think now with selling the files, you know, I'll probably get there tomorrow. But uh, well, let's find out. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. Um, in the context of the internet and the government, you know, requiring you to take files down, it's kind of this very ethereal thing. But you mentioned the idea of publishing something in a book. Mm -hmm. I think it would be very interesting if you made an effort to do that, because then it would bring a very uh, tangible realization home that what the real argument would be is that the government wanted to stop the propagation of just books. I, they would actually yeah. be burning books. I understand the point. And, and that's essentially an analogous thing here. It's just we don't realize it because it's digital and not tangible. I've gotten uh, 392 orders since this press conference began. 392? So... Look, I, your point's well taken, but of course, I've had to live through these hypotheticals for many years. When we went for the first time to the Fifth Circuit on some of these questions, when we were against the State Department, the panel of judges asked the State Department attorney, well, what if defense distributed put this information in a book and placed it in a, a public library in Texas? Of course, the man stumbled around. He didn't know what to say. Because, of course, once you've got the, the government to admit that they want to censor the publication of books in public libraries, they lose. Uh, this is the outcome of these actions, by the way. They're all going to lose. But I hope that 
in my demonstration here today that we clarify that this is simply about the people's right to speak and to post information and to have code online. Because of course you can possess it, of course I can ship it to you. My interest has only ever been, look, for five years I sat around and just decided not to sell this stuff just because I, I wanted it to be easy to understand that my point of view is about commitment of this information to the public domain, beyond the law, beyond intellectual property, beyond profit. I, I don't care about those things. But I'm not going to listen to the 20 state attorneys general high-five themselves about how Americans don't have, they can't access this stuff anymore. That's propaganda. And it's not true. So you began selling the camera? That's right. Could, you cite a lot of critical theory, uh, leftist critical theory. Why do you do this? Do you think they're right, but being incorrectly in the past uh, implemented? Do I think the states are right, but they? The critical theory of the leftist. Oh, leftist, leftist critical theory. Recon. Who are you with? DJ. Who are you with? I told your friends I'm a normie. <laughs> okay. Normie.com. I'm independent. No, I understand. Uh, well, the name of this operation is Integral Accident. And the import there is that there is no like there is no order from power that isn't also an authorization for something else. There is no catastrophe that doesn't itself contain the reverse catastrophe. To have an order from a judge in Washington saying, well, this is how you can't share the information, is to also get an order from the judge to disclose how I can share the information. The outcome, of course, is that the information will be shared. And so I ask you to help the American public clarify in their own minds what this legal fight is really about. You mentioned costs a while ago. Uh, what is the per unit cost? Of what? The files? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. It's going to be the most profitable phase of my company in its history. I thank you all. I'm really just curious. Do you see the website accepts cryptocurrency for costs? Oh, yeah. So safe to say, this isn't about making money for you. This is just about... I, I promise it never has been. Like, I promise. Uh, yeah, I was, I was sitting in my apartment in Austin, Texas. I tried to put a gun on the internet for people to download. I suppose I'll have to fight for 10 years about putting that gun on the internet for people to download. But people will have access to the gun. You understand? I hope it doesn't commit. Like, I'm not bitter. I'm not frustrated. Uh, I can only continue to patiently demonstrate that you, this, this doesn't end with the state getting the ability to tell people what they can put on the Internet. That's not how this is going to end, you guys. Have you sold these before? What, the files? Yeah. Never. Oh, I thought you said, did I sell these before? No, could you have? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. So, I guess, why didn't we? Like I said, I, I wanted to make this about, like, very clear. This is about putting files in the public domain, putting them into the commons, right? Our ethos is an open source ethos. I have no patents on the equipment that we make. I maintain no copyrights on what we author. I give it away. This fight for many years against the State Department, federal court that I paid for out of my own pocket was about whether I could give this information away, not about whether I could sell it. 20 states are coming to the court now to prevent me from what? Giving it away. I can sell it. I'm trying to give it away. It's expensive to give things away. Again, this, so this is the first time you have put these up for sale, is it? Mm-hmm. <coughs> what's, what's sad, it's like this is going to be the more, look, I'll get more people to participate this way because they can share in the profits, right? Like, if someone hears now in this report, like, huh, well, hell, I can get 50% of the profits if I, if I share on DEFCAD. And we're going to have more people getting access to this stuff than before because we created a marketplace for it now, didn't we? Anybody offer to buy it before? Or no? Sure. Wow. Yeah, but I, the, you have to maintain a whole infrastructure and... and and screen and worry about, you know, ACA compliance and all this other stuff. That's not what I was built to do. But the 
our supporters have seen fit to give me 200,000 in cryptocurrency and US dollars, okay, I'll, I'll build that infrastructure. We deployed it this morning. What are the prices that people have offered you to get? Can you say a range? I don't know, let's see. I think I saw one guy on Twitter say he paid like 15 bucks. What's this? Here's a guy, everybody's paying a dollar. What else we got here? This guy's paying 10 bucks per. It's very generous. I would suppose though this is mostly because people want to support us. Here's $8 for the Air 15 file. Zero dollars, free rider. <laughs> Scum. You know, give me a cent, give me something. And he'll do it for any, essentially any price? Mm. What kind of things can it sell on the platform? Uh, files. I'd like it to be just like the old DefCAD where you get to download it. Like, it, it needs to be liquid information. But it can be like not just CAD data which is what's at dispute in these actions, computer-aided design information. But it can be blueprints. Um, it can be any type of schematic. In C code, it can be all kinds of stuff. But you know, the main thing here is that I don't want people to sell stuff that's not theirs or stuff that's not like uh, stuff that's patented. You know, like, so that's going to have to have its own process. Thankfully, we built a lot of that because uh, you know, we knew for many months that we'd be launching this site for download. A lot of that third-party infrastructure is already there. And the review process is in place. So. Again, I don't know how sexy all this is, guys, but I, I wanted to make sure that I was very clear about what's happening today. So I don't have, like, anything else. I'm just uh, saying that that's what's going down. Do you anticipate people who are buying files will then post them online with people in the past? Like, will that court order cover that? I expect that's possible, but I certainly don't advocate it. Uh, I don't want anyone to violate any court orders. And that's an important point. This judge would see fit in this order not to just suspend my publication of these files. This, this preliminary injunction currently makes it illegal for any American in the country to, uh, to post gun-related blueprints or technical data to the internet. Oof, he went all in. I don't know that that'll make it past the Ninth Circuit. Uh, but, but he did it, didn't he? And I certainly don't advocate that anyone violate that order. Yeah, I mean, look, a lot of that technical development on printed guns we did four or five years ago, really, and a lot of what we've done since has just been about managing the, the, the legal stuff and building other stuff. I mean, my main, my main business in Austin is about selling you equipment to help you finish AR-15s and handguns. And all this stuff is traceable, of course, uh, and detectable. So this conversation about detectability is, is a slightly separate one now. Now, there is a community of people who continue to develop 3D printed guns and, and related technologies. Uh, and look, I agree. I agree with the federal law. If it's if that's our security norm, and Congress has spoken, and metal should be included, fine. You know, let metal be included. That has nothing to do with, I think, the development of the software. Though these, these are unrelated questions. What all of these files enable you to build? You, you mentioned the AR-15, or did we talk about the Liberator, or just the Liberator? Sure, sure. Of course, the Liberator. Got it. We'd have to include that, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, the AR-15, the M9. I mean, what you're looking at are like basically the blueprints in, in 3D space. That doesn't allow you to just immediately do something. But let's say you want to learn how to do something. You have the tolerance design specifications for these components. That's what you need to begin uh, to make this kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I didn't invent that, okay? Like, that's nothing, there's nothing new there. Uh, there's been computer-aided design since there's been personal computers. Since at least, I, I think AutoCAD was invented in 1982. This stuff, uh, this stuff didn't just like arrive last month. Uh, can you talk in general at all about the, the legal plan from here? It sounds like you plan to appeal, obviously, but then you know, are there, what, what grounds do you envision the appeal on? Uh, well, we've maintained all our arguments already, right? Like, you can read our briefs to see our arguments. We're confined to those arguments on appeal, of course. So, pretty standard stuff um, about the APA and states don't have standing, et cetera. No harm in fact. First Amendment, Second Amendment. Pretty, pretty simple stuff. I invite you to, to read it, though. It's it's pretty easy to understand. If you're a federal judge, I don't know. Maybe maybe not. But uh, my legal strategy from here then is I'm being sued in Pennsylvania. I'm being sued in New Jersey. 
we've removed to federal court in New Jersey as of yesterday. And I have a 1983 action here in Texas where uh, all the people like New York, Delaware, who've threatened us with cease and desist for hosting our website and doing other things have all been named as, you know, attempted violators of, of our constitutional rights. But this is only a component. Uh, we filed an action last night in Texas as well. There's all kinds of stuff that has to happen, but I, I don't feel like it's particularly sexy, nothing, nothing really newsworthy, just the maneuvering that you would expect in complex actions like this. When, uh, when stuff's popping off, I'll let you know. The action filed last night, was that okay. something new or part of the 1983? Uh, related. Really, uh, I got uh, Western District of Texas. I've got five minutes. If there's any other questions, you know, I'm, I'm certainly thankful you guys all came out. I feel like I got, you know, I've never called a press conference before, so sorry if it was like different, but I feel like I got my say here. I don't really want to kind of keep serially bringing people in and explaining this to people. I thought I'd just kind of say this in one go, and we'll see how that does. Um, I've got a lot of files to, to mail to people today. Uh, I have to get back to that. I've got to go talk to Alex Jones now. Um, you know, the real news. So you guys let me know. <laughs> you guys let me know if you have any other questions. This has no bearing on your, uh, the other aspect of uh, the, your, uh, your milling machines and help stay on that still. Nah. Although I, I this, could. Is this controversy to help? Uh, the production of those, the oh, sure, sure. All this traffic has done well for Ghost Gunner and everything. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, this is not, I, I, I have to impress upon you, like, I think the only people that got stopped in court yesterday was, like, the common man. And for some bizarre reason, his state attorneys general in these, in these blue states paraded around for him like they've done him a favor. I don't see it that way. I, I didn't get stopped yesterday, so who did? Uh, that's it for me. Thanks.